Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Now, dear Heavenly Father, as we study thy word today, give us wisdom. And we'll give the Lord God all the praise because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to mention today, uh, from the Word of God, as time permits, I want to mention what our body should be to the Lord and what our body means to the Lord and how we should use our body after we become a child of God. In other words, what does the body have to do with salvation And what does God want us to do with our body after we're saved? You know, some people think that when they get born again, that's all there is to it. They can live like they please, do like they please, act like they please, and go where they please, and it's nobody's business because they're saved, and it doesn't make any difference how they live after they're saved. But I want to mention, as time permits, and I'll only be able to give you the outline. That's about all, just the outline. And I want you to read the Scriptures. You read them. Now then, in 1 Corinthians six 19, first of all, the body of the born again is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Notice, in 1 Corinthians six 19, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now then, my friend, when you're born again, when you're a child of God, when you become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're born of His Spirit and washed in His blood, you are no longer your own. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Bible commands us to glorify God in our body because it is God's. It's not your own. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. What a tremendous price the Son of God paid on Calvary for you and for me. Jesus bought us. He purchased us. He redeemed us with His shed blood on the cross of Calvary, and your redemption and my redemption is made possible only through His shed blood. And when you become a believer, your body is the house that God lives in. God lives in the body of every born-again child of God. Peter says we are made partakers of divine nature. Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. And so when we become a believer, when we are born again, we are part, that is, we become a partaker, and we become a member and a part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Spiritually, we are partakers of of the divine nature. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Anything that you do in your body that is not a glory to God, it's a sin. Anything you practice in your body that is not to God's glory is sinful and harmful, and, beloved friends, you'll pay for it just as sure as you practice anything that's not to the glory of God in your body. Now, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. Your soul, your spirit, and your body belongs to God, and He wants you to glorify Jesus in your every action. Now then, in Romans chapter 12, in verse 1, we find the second thing. Now remember, I said in the first place, and please jot down these references, will you? In 1 Corinthians six nineteen, the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Number two. In Romans 12 and verse 1, Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that perfect and acceptable will of God. Now then, our body is to be presented to the Lord a living sacrifice. God doesn't want us to die for him. He wants us to live for him. And so our bodies is to be presented to him. Not to die, but to live. And we are to uh, be not conformed to this world. Now, when we do that, when we do that, we don't have a thing to brag about and boast about. When you surrender your eyes and your ears and your mouth and your feet and your hands and all that you are, when you surrender everything to God, you haven't done a thing in the world to brag about. The Bible says it is your reasonable service. Listen, when your child goes out and mows the lawn, uh, or rakes up the grass, or digs the weed out of the, the weeds out of the shrubbery, do you? Uh, does he come in and expect you to brag and boast and uh, pat him on the back and pay him two dollars an hour for it? Now, of course, you'll probably give him a gift. Well, bless your heart. The air we breathe and the sunshine we bathe in, the health and strength we have, and everything on earth we have, God dumps it in our lap. We certainly don't earn it. God gives it to us. Now then, if you are saved, God Almighty purchased you at a tremendous price, the price of the blood of the Lord Jesus on Calvary. And when we give God our best, when we give Him our hands and our feet and our eyes and our ears and all that we are, when we present ourselves a living sacrifice, then, beloved friends, we haven't done anything to boast about and brag about. It is our reasonable service. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Now then, in the third place, I want you to look at Romans 6 and verse 13. Romans chapter 6, and I want us to read verse 13, and listen what this verse has to say. Now, in the body we are to yield, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness, notice, unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, let me tell you something right now. You have no right to use your hands for anything except that which will glorify God. Now, I mean by that, you, you have no right to run a job with your hands that is ungodly. You have no right to participate in anything with your hands or your feet or your eyes or your strength, your body, the members of your body, that isn't to God's glory and to glorify God. Your members, your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears, your tongue, and all that you are, are to be yielded to God as instruments of righteousness and not yielded to the devil as instruments of sin. Now, I don't understand to save my neck how some Christians can watch some of the things they look at today and tell me that it's not wrong. I don't understand how some of you read the books you read and the magazines you read and look at the things you see and have the, uh, the brass and the audacity to look the preacher in the face and say it's not wrong. God wants your eyes yielded to look and to live for righteousness and not sin. And God wants every member of your body yielded unto him as a member of righteousness and a member of godliness and not a member of ungodliness. Now, I'd like to stay there longer, but I can't. Listen, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you are to yield your body a living sacrifice. Number three, you are to present your members instruments of righteousness unto God and not instruments of sin to the devil. Now, I just read first, uh, Romans rather, 6 and verse 13. Now then, in the next place, we are to use our bodies to glorify God. 1 Corinthians 6.20 Paul said, Therefore glorify God in your body. Now since I mentioned that, and I talked about it just a moment ago, I won't deal with it 
any further. I'll just let that go, because in the first place, when I said the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians six nineteen, I also dealt with verse 20, which says that uh, we are to glorify God in our bodies. Now then, I want to read the last verse that I'll read to you today, and I want to talk to, talk to you about it, and then I'll pray, and I hope and I trust that if there's a man or a woman, boy or girl, listen to me, and you haven't surrendered unreservably to God, I pray this will be the happy day when you'll surrender all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's the verse I want to read. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. W-H-O-L-L-Y. I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and B-O-D-Y, body, soul, spirit, rather, first, soul, second, body, third, be preserved blameless unto the coming Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 23. Now, Paul said to the Christians at Thessalonica, I pray God, I pray God, the very God of peace, sanctify. Now, that word sanctify means to set apart. Sanctify you holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. That means entirely from head to foot, hands, feet, eyes, ears, holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. I pray God your whole spirit. Now, that's the mental or the thinking, the reasoning part of man's spirit. And soul, that's the loving part. That's the seed of affection. And that's the part of man that loves and hates. And uh, so he says, I want your spirit, I want your soul, and I want your body preserved blameless. Now, God not only wants our spirit, God not only wants our soul, but he wants our body. God wants your hands, God wants your feet, God wants your eyes, God wants your ears. And whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, we're commanded to do it all to the glory of our God. Do it all to the glory of our God. Now, if you are practicing, if you are participating in those things that do not glorify God, mark it down, you're sinning. And remember, you can't get away with sinning. If you are a sinner, you'll burn in the pits of hell for your sin. If you are a Christian that is unfaithful, you must reap corruption for the seed sown to the flesh. If you're using your eyes to glorify the lust of the flesh, your hands, your feet, your ears, if you listen, if you listen to things, if you listen to programs on the radio, or watch them on television, or any other avenue where you may listen or watch or participate in anything that is to the lust of the flesh, my friend, I warn you, a harvest of corruption is bound to come. Now, let me just give you the outline of what I've said. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians six nineteen. The body is to be presented to God a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1. The body is to be presented to God with its instruments as instruments of righteousness, Romans six thirteen, And the body is to be used to glorify God Almighty only, 1 Corinthians six twenty. Whether you're eating, drinking, or whatsoever you're doing, the Bible commands us to do it all to the glory of God. Now, I'm talking about the body of a child of God, of course. The poor sinner belongs to the devil, body, spirit, and soul. The poor sinner is in bondage to the devil, body, soul, and spirit. But the Christian has been freed from the bondage of the devil in his soul and in his spirit, and if surrendered in his body. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not permit you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. 
So, my friend, if you are a victim of the devil's temptations, it's not God's fault. God has provided escape if you'll only accept it. Heavenly Father, save the soul that's nearest hell today for Jesus' sake and give victory to the defeated and we'll give God the praise in Christ's precious name. Amen. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilt.